Hey everyone, it's Sensei Victoria Whitfield here, your journey partner in business, welcoming you back to episode 114 of the Journeypreneur podcast. This is your source for channel holistic stress management techniques, guidance, inspiration, and motivation to stay on your path to rapid financial ascension and massive impact as a conscious entrepreneur. So today's podcast episode, yay, I get to share with you my dear, fabulous, loving, amazing goddess friend, Dr. Jane Tornator. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. What a, del- what a delicious welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yay. I love it. I'm so happy and grateful that I get to, to share your message and your energy and your beauty and just all of the good, juicy, juicy, golden nuggets that are in your brain. Oh, my goddess. Like, it's so wonderful to get to celebrate you, especially because as a psychotherapist, you advocate for loving ourselves, radical yes. self-love. And for those of you who are listening in, you can find Dr. Jane Tornator at Everyday Love. Dot me is her URL. So with that being said, Jane, all right, yes. this may be the very first time that someone is getting to hear of you or meet you. And so if you could tell us what you do, but in particular, my favorite thing is to know what are the three things that you're known for? Could you tell us? Yes. The first thing I'm known for is simple but profound tools to increase self-love and self-compassion mm. like not really big ones but just simple little everyday tools hence my name everyday love um the second thing is um my enthusiasm and authenticity now next to you i'm like i'm like i'm feeling like an enthusiastic baby <laughs> but it's totally okay because you've got, you've got, you are an enthusiasm rock star, Thank you, right? <laughs> in the real world, right? <laughs> yeah. I get so excited when I talk about, you know, self-love and boundaries and little things we can do to change our life. And the third thing is I'm a brain geek. I, I, I love knowing about the brain and the nervous system. And right now I'm loving finding about polyvagal theory and, what I find is when I work with my clients, giving them the the neurological and biological reasons for how they're responding, how they are, it like totally decreases their shame. Ooh. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Isn't it? Oh, like, anything to reduce shame in this world is good by my book. Amen. Right. L- like, isn't it interesting how when we have simple, clear biological, biochemical, physiological things that can explain what's going on. Shame and emotional phenomenon decreases. Like Yes. Wow. Right? Gorgeous. So simple. Like it's so simple. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm curious. I'm mm-hmm. curious. So what got you into... This in the first place, like why was there something that happened or do you have a story around the the day that you decided or the moment you decided to become a psychotherapist? Like what what inspired you? I'm curious. I do have a story. And what's really interesting is that clients I've, I've said this on other podcasts before and clients have literally when they come, they say, I came to you because your story. which is really interesting to me. So anyway, my story is my family was not, oh, the healthiest family. Yay! (laughs) Like, it wasn't like, you know, apple pie family. So I became a therapist for very good reasons, Mm. but I didn't know it yet, right? So my sister, I was working in advertising in New York City, living with my sister after college, and um hating it and my so my sister dragged us all to the family therapist she's like you know we got to do something here people this is awful so i'm so I'm like, okay i i didn't think about therapy before it wasn't even on my radar so here's how the therapist opened the session she said my job is to put myself out of a job and i'm like what yeah. that's crazy talk what do you mm. what I'm working in advertising, right? I'm like, no, you don't put yourself out of a job. You make more money. That's what you do. That's your job. 
And she said, but she had my attention, right? I'm like, oh, this woman is saying something really bizarre. So she said, when I work with families and they become healthier, and if they have kids, those kids are going to become healthier. So because they're healthier, if they have partners, get partners, they're going to be healthier with their partners. And if they have kids, those kids are going to be healthier. And then those kids are going to have partners who are going to be healthier. And she said, it'll spread around the world and I'm out of a job. Yay. And I'm like, I want to do that. That's what I want. It just, I just knew right away. That's what I want. Mm. I want to spread health around the world. And I went back and went into my boss and said, I'm quitting and I'm going to go back to grad school to become a therapist. Which was perfect because I, I sucked at advertising. <laughs> <laughs> it was clearly not the right job for me. <laughs> I love it. Yes. So I quit and um, then I forgot about it. And I decided I was going to become an academic professor. I was going to teach and do research because I didn't have the courage to do therapy. Ooh. Right? To have my own business. I didn't have the courage to do what I'm doing now. So... I um, I was working in research and very good at it and loved it and it was interesting, but I didn't wake up every morning and go, I'm so excited to do my job today. I'm so excited to run my statistics. I'm so excited to read this research article. I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. But mm -hmm. it was just like, it was just like the plodding along day to day. Mm -hmm. and so the grant I was working on was ending and I thought, and I, I just started reading and then freaked out by The Course in Miracles. Ooh. I was like reading it and it said, this chair is not here. And I'm like, it's too much. And I threw it away, right? I was just <laughs> not in that space. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, so this time I was like, well, if there's a time for me to go out on my own, this is a perfect time. So I did. And it was a long journey, long, mm. long, long journey. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm so happy. And now, can I? So now I've just made another pivot. Ooh! Is, so for ten years, I'll, um, I was, I was, my one dream was to build a full private practice. So for five years, it was to have a full private practice, and so I took insurance, and and finally, long haul. Um, and I have a story about that turnaround. Ooh. But um, I got it, and then I'm like. <gasps> But I hate working with insurance. It, it felt inauthentic every time I'd write the care plan. And I'm like, yes. that's not how I work. Mm -hmm. I want people to love themselves. I don't cure diseases, right? Mm -hmm. So every time it was like inauthentic, inauthentic, inauthentic. So I uh, decided to have the courage to stop taking insurance. And then for five years, it's like, I just want a, a full private practice, private pay. That's all I want. I just want that. It took me five years because marketing's not my superpower. It wasn't. We're going to shift in that. And um, then it became full. And I'm like, yay, my dream of 10 years is here. And then, like six months later, I went, what's next? Oh. Right? It, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. I was like, mm. there's something more. So that's when I decided, because I can only see like 18 to 20 clients a week, because it takes a lot of energy to calm my nervous system and my client's nervous system mm -hmm. so they can, you know, work through their fears and get into freedom. So I can't help a bunch of people. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, it's time to go online to reach more people, which is totally a fear zone. Oh my God. And I'm still, I'm still working through that fear, but that's when I launched the website everydaylove.me to give these tools that I give my clients every day to reach hopefully hundreds of thousands of people because these tools work and I want to, I want to spread it around the world. Just like that first therapist that I met, you know, Oh God, like 35 years ago. Mm. So that's my story. Oh my God. This is fabulous. Right? <laughs> like, oh, the, what, what I am especially in awe of is how clear you were in describing of what you really want to do for your clients of I hope people love themselves I don't cure diseases right Ooh. so 
I don't know if you know this about me personally, but before I got into being in business for myself, I used to work as a medical billing and coding manager for years and years. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's hard to picture. <laughs> that was, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of containment of energy, right? <laughs> Big time, I was in like super shutdown mode. And right. I, um, the practice, they loved me. There's a cardiovascular uh, specialist office. And so they had like one full-time doctor and a, and a part-time doctor when I entered. And in a few years, I took them from making 75 grand a month to over 750 grand a month. Wow. Threw them to six full-time doctors and all that. So <sighs> that was what I was capable of when I was totally numbed out and shut down. So <laughs> like I got thought to... Oh my God. My mouth is hanging open. Yeah. <laughs> and the only, like, it was about learning how to play the insurance company's games. Mm -hmm. And it was just like figuring out how to hack their system to make money come out. So it was like all of the, um, how do you say, emotional um, disconnect and detachment of like, yeah, hey, I'm in here to just like turn this into a printing press. And I did. Mm -hmm. And then I realized how profitable it is for people to be sick mm -hmm. and that disgusted me mm -hmm. i started to feel disgusted with myself Ugh. uh and i would drink and smoke and only really eat twix as my main meal <laughs> of oh the day God. and it was it was numbing great. right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's like super so job numbing yeah <laughs> numbed out numbed out Rather than um, confronting the fact that I was disgusted with the system that I was playing in, um, mm -hmm. luckily I had an experience of, well, not luckily, of my boss screaming so loud at one of the people that uh, answered to me that I had chest pain for the first time in my life in my 20s. Yeah. And I never got to meet my grandfather because he dropped out of, at work as a with a heart attack. So, wow. like, for me, it was like, no, 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 no. That was the wake-up call to get the right. hell out and to start believing that there's another paradigm. So I want to celebrate you, Jane, for advocating for people learning how to love themselves rather than people seeing themselves as cars that got to go to the mechanic to get opened up and slapped together and then put back on the road. Like, right. thank you for what you do. Thank you yeah, for what thank you do. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And like with that, you know, as we're on our journey, right. Our, of expansion, I believe that like when, when we commit to service, you know, one of the three branches, three dharmas of Buddhism is service as a, vehicle for enlightenment when we commit to serving others through our business there are things that come up that trigger our growth <laughs> underlining the word trigger so <laughs> i'm curious was there ever a point and this i know i'm asking like a very loaded question here was there ever a point that you felt like you know what I don't have what it takes like I maybe I should throw in the towel on my mission um and on my vision was there was there ever a point where you came to that and if so like what did you tell yourself I ask because there are people who are listening in right now who may be right there and need to hear a word from a goddess who's on the other side of the dark chasm so could you tell me like what happened then Right. If I'm going to be completely honest, there are many points like that. Yes. You know, you know, the, the term wounded, uh, wounded warrior. Yes. Right. A wounded healer. Mm -hmm. We teach what we most need to learn. Mm -hmm. I teach self-love. So guess what my greatest struggle in life is? Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. right there with you, goddess. Right? I've got tools because... I need tools, right? Yeah. So um, this is something that even though I keep moving forward and expanding, it's always I'm just going to deeper levels of self-love because I'm, I'm going to deeper levels of self-hate, right? Mm -hmm. So this for me is honestly, it's, it's probably going to be a lifelong struggle. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm, I'm, I love myself so much more and I'm so much calmer and I'm happier and, and uh, successful and all that. But I'm one of my things is being authentic. Mm. So I'm not like, it's all good. I'm like, it's good. And I still got darkness because I'm human, mm-hmm. right? I'm human with wounds. So I just go deeper with the wounds and deep and higher with the freedom. So it's, it's almost like a, it's a, you know, not a linear up, but a linear up and down process. Mm. And I'm, I'm really big on, we hold both. We hold all of our humanity. Mm. This is not about being perfect. It's not about being good. It's not even about being better. It's about being more whole. So that's my, so that's why I'm like, as I grow up, I deal with, with, you know, the, the deeper aspects of my own self-judgment and Mm. self-hatred. So, but I've got a great story for one of the times I almost uh, threw in the towel, (laughs) (laughs) which was, um, it was early, it was probably year three in my business. Mm. And I, I learned wacky, wacky beliefs about money. Mm-hmm. I learned that there's never, ever, ever enough, right? Mm-hmm. That's, I grew up with that and I'm still like, no, there's enough. There's, and there always is enough. That's what's so strange. There's always, always, always enough. And I continue to go, but there's not, even as I make over a hundred thousand dollars, it's like, no, but that's not, it's, you still don't have enough because you have to pay me, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just a, it's one of my things like, yeah, I just start to live in reality versus your belief system, Jane. But anyway, one of the, one of my favorite stories is like every year, even in the beginning of my business, I would make more money like every year. And I'd pay off more debt. Cause I had a lot of student loan debt and car debt. And every year I'd make more money and pay off debt. And every month I would be like, oh, I hope I have enough money to buy food and pay my rent. Like every month I would have like 10 extra dollars. Mm. Right. So if anything, extra happened. I'm like, ah! and I always had enough when something extra happened, but, but I was just like, I don't, so I was, I lived in that constant lack and constant constriction of lack. So because that book that I threw away still, you know, the course of miracles still had, uh, uh, it's, it's little like tendrils in my brain. I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I know that feeling abundance is powerful. I have a hard time doing it because when I would feel abundant, I would shut down. Mm. Like I would actually get more constricted and I'm like, no, I'm fabulously wealthy. And I'm, my psyche's like, that's crap. <laughs> you are not fabulously wealthy. Stop saying it. Right, right. <laughs> so I had to make it my own. And that's one of my things is I help my clients make tools their own because they're my tools and they work for me. But that, but that doesn't mean they're automatically going to work for my clients. So it's like, how do you take it? The tendril the kernel and make it powerful for you. So mm-hmm. anyway, so that's what I did. So what I decided one year was I was going to buy a cup of coffee a week, whether I could afford it or not. Like that's the space I was in, right? Ooh. My cup of coffee, whether I could afford it or not once a week. And I'm going to start a gratitude practice. So when I woke up in the morning and for me, listing wasn't good because I'm a recovering perfectionist. So I'd be like, well, that list sucks. That's not good enough. That's mm. the same list you had last week. That you know. So I would judge my list. So instead, what I did is I would just feel, like physically feel gratitude. And so in the morning before I got out of bed, I would just feel gratitude. And then at night before I went to bed, I would just feel gratitude for nothing in particular. Mm. I was just grateful. And then after a couple of weeks, I noticed I would start like spontaneously feeling grateful. So I could tell my neural pathways were starting to shift Mm. to make gratitude like a natural pathway, unconscious process versus I have to feel grateful for three things today. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so I did that. I had a cup of coffee a week, whether I could afford it or not. And I did my gratitude practice and Victoria at the end of that year, for the first time in like three or four years, I didn't make more money. And I was eating out, I'd paid off more debt, and I had extra money at the end of the month. Now, before it made no sense that mm. I didn't have any extra money when I was paying off more debt and I was making, more, I was looking at it going, it doesn't make sense that I feel poor. And so this time it was like, it doesn't make sense that I have enough when I didn't make any more money. 
So it wasn't about the money. It was not about the money. It was about me and my presence in my life. Mm. So after that, I went, and after that, my business grew even more. And I have more at the end of the month. And I'm spending money on my business and stuff that I want. And and um, I still honestly struggle with, I want I want to expand more. I want to get, get more help to help me expand more. And I'm like, I don't know if I have enough money. But I'm in a totally different plane than I was before. And I expect to be on a totally different plane later too. Mm. But that was such a simple practice that was like magic. It made no sense, but it, but it worked. So anyway, that's my, that's my story. So wow. for me, what the, what the bottom line was is with lack, I was constricting. I, I could feel my whole presence, my whole body constricting. So how am I going to allow in any clients or abundance or any good when I'm constricted? So the gratitude practice, the allowing myself a cup of coffee, literally opened up my body and my psyche, mm. so I could I could um, be more with what was versus my my constricted lack belief system. Yeah, what? so I was more open to the world. Oh. Isn't that an awesome story? Yes. <laughs> and this is so fab. I'm just taking it in. I'm I'm taking in how brilliant um this shift is because I'm going to gender this. It's um mental transformation, thinking and logicking and efforting and calculating like I have to have three uh -huh. things that I itemize, that I'm grateful for. Right. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, or for those of you who are listening in, disagree with me if you want to, please do. I would love to hear it. I believe it's a very masculine energy of codifying the transformation, um, how do you say, documenting uh, and kind of pushing through to make sure I ha I meet my my numbers of three right. things on a daily basis that I And we always people always quantify or qualify is it good enough? Mm. Is this a good enough thing or is this not good enough? Is this stupid? Is this blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Did I win? Yeah. Did I did I win? Did I do yeah. the best <clears throat> job that I possibly could because I met the this measuring stick that I've applied to myself. And the feeling sense of rather than it being something that you can necessarily codify, but instead you, you experience it, this feeling of gratitude, practicing yes. the feeling of gratitude like in my body, yeah. right? A sensual, um, mm -hmm. experience of an idea, right? Or, or a mindset, the sensual experience or, um, trying to trying to remember what the term was for a like a um sensual um experience like there's a very specific word it's dropping out of my head at the moment but the sensuality of it i believe is essentially feminine choosing to feel your way into the new paradigm rather than win your way right into the new paradigm uh, that is desired. This is really a revelation because for me personally, I, I've, I've grown up in um, a patriarchal paradigm mm -hmm. that measures um, and is constantly right. measuring and is hierarchical in its in its essence. So in order to have the felt sense of gratitude or the felt sense of my manifestation or my desired outcome to feel it in my body is something entirely from left field or from the feminine field. If we want to put it that yes. way. Um, I'm curious, like what, what comes up for you around shifting in a masculine sense versus shifting in a feminine sense? Because the story that you shared with me, I I'm very intrigued by how feminine the practice was that you shared yeah i grew up the same with as you and academia in my mind it was like how many articles you publish what are the quality of the journals yep, yep, how, what yep. are your student evaluations blah 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 how many committees you're on it was all about measurement 
And I grew up with, that's how you measure success. Mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up with the masculine model, the numbers matter. The, the number of people, like one of the, one of my, before I went into academia, I think I used as a grad student, I had this secret desire, which was I wanted to publish, because back then it was a really big deal. I wanted to publish in Reader's Digest because I knew I would reach so many people because yes. gazillions of people read Reader's Digest back then. Mm -hmm. Journal articles, you're lucky if 11 people read them, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing it for prestige and your Vita. You aren't doing it to reach a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing it to be known in your field and seen as the expert. You aren't doing it. Okay, so this is a major generalization, but some people do it to change the world. Mm -hmm. And some people do change the world through their research. But really, it's like I have to, we're always judging and we're always competing and we're always seeing where we are as compared to other people. And, you know, if I would have said, I want to publish in Reader's Digest, they would have been like, yeah, no, <laughs> that's not good enough. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think at my heart, I bought into the, the paradigm of thou shalt judge and compare and have a hierarchy, but my heart was never there. Mm -hmm. It was never there. So one with that, um, in my mind, brilliant decision, like two such simple things, like changed my whole, my whole money mindset. It changed my business. It changed the amount of people I would you know, I would reach. So um, I think when I finally started following my heart, that's when I, I started reaching people mm -hmm. and allowing people to find me and hear my message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what I love about the idea of following your heart is that whether you, you are male or female, you have one or unless yes. like, uh Oh, the gene split and your heart went elsewhere. So like that. Right. <laughs> Praying for the babies born without hearts. Um, mm -hmm. For those who've manifested that in this lifetime. But whether you're male or female or trans, right? Uh, mm -hmm. There's, you have a heart. And this masculine feminine right. paradigm is one that applies to both and all Everybody. of the body, all, every single body. And that reminds me of the word I was trying to think of before. And it was somatic, the sense of som oh, somatic experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. Somatic experiences. So for, as opposed to just cognition. So mm -hmm. for uh, those who are listening in who are like, go, go gadget jargon. I have no idea what you mean by somatic. What do you mean by cognitive? So like, Cognition is thought processes. Somatic is sensual, like embodied processes, experiences that you're having. So in, in the, I just have to really, really praise you goddess for sharing a somatic technique. Right. That, and how the power of somatic knowledge and somatic feeling, somatic Mm, experiences, somatic emotions can really give us a gateway for tuning into our innate wisdom mm -hmm. uh, and really embodying it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like yeah. There's that. so many people who work, work, work are successful and work, 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 and they leave their body behind. Mm -hmm. Like their body suffers, their body gets illnesses, their body has pain because they're like, here's my goal and I will make it. And the body's like, hello. I'm here too. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you don't exist. Right. But when they start to pay attention to their body, they're what they're doing in the way they're doing it isn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. so our body is a great balancer for, um, let's take all of us into this life and how we live. Let's live fully versus just, you know, this, this head goal thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our body has so much wisdom. Oh my goodness. Yay! I love it. And it's so true. As a high achiever, half my practice, my own personal development practice has been reconnecting to my body rather than leaving her behind. Right. Um, in order yep. to achieve, achieve, achieve the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so here's the juice. 
Okay. You. Are all the juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it, Victoria? What is it? I'm waiting. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's you. Oh, my God. It's Jane. Like, this, I'm, our conversation right now, I know, is only the tip of the iceberg of all of the incredible wisdom and techniques, right? And and just all, all of what you have to share here in the world. And I know that we could go on talking for three hours, but I'm not Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he's fabulous. Shout out to everyone who listens to Joe Rogan. But at the same time, I want to... I want to honor the fact that someone may be listening in right now who's like, wow, this is my woman. <laughs> this is my woman, like, who feels like he or she needs to connect in a deeper way to you. And with that being said, with all of what you've blessed us with, I want to know, where do we get to go to celebrate you? Like, where is it online? Where are we going? Like, wh- how do we connect and celebrate with you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. So my website is everydaylove.me. I have a book, everything, and I'll show it for the video people. Everything is perfect. Just not me, a roadmap for self-acceptance. This book is like less than 50 pages long, Mm. super simple. Some of my most powerful tips I give my clients. And this is the part I'm both very excited and scared about. This is my next level is I have an online program, which I'm uh, starting in January and will launch about quarterly of seven powerful practices for your inner perfectionist. Yes. So I'm super excited. So people who can't come into my office can still get the tools. And then we've got um, online group video calls so I can help them you know, tailor the tools to what's happening in their life. So (laughs) that's my next, um, my next stretch. And I'm, I'm very excited and very scared at the same time, but I'm committed. It's like, I have to do It's one of those drives. It's like, it's coming from my heart. You will do this, Jane. Mm -hmm. So, so it feels very powerful. (gasps) I love it. Oh, this is so good. I'm the fact that it is like, scary is also mm-hmm. the fact that it's powerful like you right it, it wouldn't be scary if it wasn't like something powerful and transformational that you're birthing Ooh, in this you just world. gave me chills down my whole body yeah and so it is confirmation chills right mm-hmm. oh my goddess so beautiful so where by the way where will people find out about that do they need to like go to the website and get on the email list that so they oh, know about the question lo- Oh, so my book is on Amazon. If you just do everything is perfect, just not me. If you do everything is perfect, you'll get, because I'm a liar, that always comes up first. (laughs) It's a different message than mine. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Don't click that one if you want my message. (laughs) Um, So that's on Amazon. And the program you can find, if you go to everydaylove.me, there will be a, a thing right at the top to click to learn more about the program. Alrighty. And so it is. I love it. Um, and I'm so excited to get to celebrate you more in the future. Jane, thank you so much for stopping by on the podcast. I am so delighted to be here, Victoria, and spend time with you again. It's it just opened my heart. Yay. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I'm going to turn it over to our listeners now. So, If this is your first time stopping by the Journeypreneur podcast, hi, thank you for stopping by. Please make sure that you hit that subscribe button on iTunes so that you get the notifications of our new episodes first as they launch. And while you're at it, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. My favorite part is reading the comments that everyone leaves for their five-star reviews. This is episode 114 with Jane Tornator, Dr. Jane Tornatorb. What was your favorite thing that she said? Leave it in that comment section with your five-star review. I'd love to hear what blessed you. 
Um, not only does that, yay, make me feel filled and appreciated, but it also helps the rest of our tribe out there who are looking for support and positive inspiration to know that this is the right place to come to and get it. So thank you for supporting all of us in sharing your stories. So with that being said, we're going to bring this podcast to a close with the same thing that I say every time, please. Remember to enjoy the journey. Do not lose your glow as you grow in life and business. And I'll see you in the next podcast episode. Bye!